In this video, we're going to talk about how plants reproduce. And there are two types of seeds created in plants, and they're called gymnosperms and angiosperms. And so I'm going to give you a second, like I did in the last video, I want you to jot down the definitions, and I'll come back in just a minute and explain them. All right, gymnosperms and angiosperms, just, it's really more definitions than anything. Uh, a gymnosperm has a naked seed, and that won't make much sense until I get down here, and then I'll work my way back up. Seeds that do not have a covering over them, usually cone-bearing. Now, you've probably seen that in pine trees or sometimes in the Christmas trees that you buy at Christmas. They have little cones in them. That's where the seeds are formed inside these trees, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then there are the angiosperms. Seeds are covered by a seed coat. Now, these are going to be ones that you really know. These are ones that you're going to know as fruits. For example, a fruit really is, so if you had an apple per se, and I'm a horrible artist, but if you had an apple per se, when it hangs on the tree, okay, when you pull that apple off, or this could be a cherry as well, that very center in there, when you eat that apple, inside you have all those seeds in there, that's what the fruit is actually used for. That fruit is going to protect the seeds. So if we're out in the wilderness and that apple falls to the ground, it will decay. And as it decays, it will then let go of its seed and you can have a new apple tree. When we eat, we actually eat the fruit that's used to protect it. But that actual fruit is really, really helpful in protecting the seed and we don't eat the actual seed so we're talking about apples um, peaches are the same way cherries okay a pear all of these that have fruits that we typically eat work this way now one that you probably don't eat an acorn off of uh, an oak tree and we see a lot of these in Texas the seed is actually inside the acorn it has this seed coat that covers it and that's what's really important about those okay so you really know uh, angiosperms a lot better now we don't eat the fruits of all of them but the fruit themselves are what protect the seeds okay so when it says it's covered by a seed coat it might be a thin seed coat uh, maybe hard sort of like a sunflower seed that's another good example okay Sunflower seed, many of us eat, eat those at the baseball game. Um, sunflower seeds, that has a shell, and that shell protects the seed that's on the inside, so it has some kind of covering. Gymnosperms, on the other hand, don't quite work like that. Let me give you a better picture of what those look like. Here's, the here's a picture of gymnosperms. Now, what most people don't know is that they're on a pine tree, such as these, they have uh, two types of cones. You have male cone and the female cone. We're used to seeing this one. You've probably seen these before, but thought that they developed into this, but they're different from one another. Notice it says the male cone is usually found in the highest part of the tree. It contains the pollen that can be carried by the wind to the female cones. Now, here's what's interesting. The female cones usually found in the lower parts of the tree. They will open up to take in pollen, and then they'll actually close Okay, so the, the pine needles, or, or excuse me, the cones, these will close up so that the seeds can develop inside of the cone, and then on a certain time, they will actually, now if you look carefully, you can see one that's closed right there. But what will happen is it will open up and let the seeds go, and as the seeds hit the ground and they get water and moisture and sunlight, they can then uh, germinate and become new trees. Well, that's very different from something like an apple. Okay, the apple has that covering on it. This does not. So it opens up and lets the seeds fall out. And sometimes it falls out when the wind blows. So when the wind blows, it'll blow it to another place and maybe it gets its own piece of ground where it can grow. So when it said in, the, in that first picture, they have a naked seed, the seed itself, when it falls out of here, it's all alone and it's ready to germinate. It does not have a fruit of any sort to cover it at all. Okay, so that's the difference between angiosperms, those are the fruits, the, the, the tree has some kind of fruit on it, maybe a fruit that we actually eat, or like in the case of an acorn, it would be more of a fruit, not like we eat, but it's something that protects the seeds so that another tree can develop. In the gymnosperms, 
these here, they're a little bit different, uh, but they have what is called a naked seat. Now, I'm going to give you two other terms real quick that they like to use, and so I want to make sure you know this. A deciduous tree and an evergreen. Okay? Deciduous tree and an evergreen. I'm going to make it as easy as I can for you. Deciduous trees are the ones that lose their leaves. These are the ones, the trees, that you have to go rake the yard because the leaves come off. And so in the fall, these are the ones that change colors and they will fall off and you'll end up having to rake them up. These are deciduous trees. Evergreen trees, they don't lose their leaves. Okay, Pine trees are a good example. Uh, maybe the Christmas trees that you buy at Christmas. Now, doesn't mean they can't lose, in a case of an evergreen in these, they have the little pine needles. If you don't water them, they'll fall off. But if they're getting normal water and things, even a deciduous tree, even if it's getting normal water, when it becomes fall, the leaves are going to fall off. An evergreen, pine tree, Christmas tree, they will keep their needles. Now, if they don't get enough water, they'll start to brown and die. And when they die, those needles will fall off because the actual tree itself has died. Okay? Now, the other thing I want to talk about really quick uh, has to do with the leaves on these. These are the ones that have the really fat leaves. Okay, they're sort of flat, and they might actually have those veins that uh, look sort of nothing like that because I can't draw, but leaves like this. Pine needles, you've seen these before. These are the very, very thin, 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 thin pine needles. I can't draw these very well, but they're located in this picture right here. You've seen pine needles before. Big difference on what they can do. Okay, they're both green, so they have the process of photosynthesis. These lose very little water. They lose very little water because they're so thin. These lose a lot of water. Okay? There's a whole lot more. So it's a lot, if, if I use a comparison, if this is the leaf, all of this surface, and actually under the bottom is where it happens, it can lose all kinds of water under here. So this tree has to have a whole lot more water because it can lose so much water in the heat of the day. With a pine needle, it's just a single. And so there's just not a whole lot of surface to lose water. And so these tend to hang on to water a little bit better than these. So a little bit of difference. Deciduous trees have the big leaves that tend to fall off. They change colors. They lose a lot more water compared to the evergreens. They don't lose their leaves unless the plant actually, the plant itself dies. Pine trees, Christmas trees, and they lose very little water. So. In this video, we've talked about the differences between gymnosperms and angiosperms, knowing that gymnosperms have the naked seed, angiosperms are the ones that have the fruits, and then we talked about the difference between deciduous trees and evergreen trees and how their leaves are completely different and uh, the ones that lose leaves and those that do not. So these cover the parts of trees and plants, deciduous and gymnosperms and angiosperms.